high electric skateboard builders. So this is a new segment that I'll be doing every week or month or whatever, whatever sort of feels right. But um, it's Potter's Prophecies. Basically, it's where I tell you what's going on in the industry. I talk about the other major mainstream brands, okay? Inertion is not mainstream. I'm in a garage right now. This is, you know, I'm a small guy. So what are the big guys doing? Um, I think I've got a pretty good idea. The reason I have a good idea is I know a lot about what people who like electric skateboards want. Because I'm very active on the forums, I get a lot of insight into things that people like, what they don't like, and I'm pretty sure that the big brands get a lot of that information as well. So with that information, I can pretty much predict what they're gonna do. So this whole uh, episode is based around Potter's prophecies. Boosted boards. So what are they gonna do? Well, as you know, uh, well, last time I checked at least their website, with, with, they were not, not selling any products, so something's going on. Um, so here's what I think's happening. Their battery has been a little bit of an Achilles heel for them. I know why they did that, and they did it so you could take the thing on a plane, 99 watt hours. That was their key strategy. Now, the problem though is it just, that's not actually that much power. You can't ride very far. Look at, you know, look at all the forums. People are, uh, love longer range batteries. They love the aeroplane as well though. So the new models will have a detachable battery. It'll be removable or upgradable or there'll be a way to add to it some sort of additional pack that straps on. I would tend to think it will just be a new enclosure that's swappable. Think, think mellow. Think what they're doing. Um, what else? Uh, I don't know if they'll stick with that deck. I'm not sure. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice deck. There are plenty of people who like that deck. Um, but, yeah, they, they could have a different shape or, or maybe a few shapes. So, so, yeah, that's the other thing I'm thinking is going to happen. Maybe something that's not so flexible. Maybe. Um, the other thing you might see a slight performance increase. So there's already plenty of torque there. Don't get me wrong. The, Juicer, the, the, the Booster Dual Plus has torque. It's just limited in speed. So I would say a little bit higher top speed is, is what you'll get there. Otherwise, I don't think they're gonna do much else. So replaceable battery or add-on battery pack. New deck, different shape, not so flexible maybe. And um, what was the last one I just said? Um, oh, higher top speed. My bell, my bell, my bell, my bell. Okay, so I don't know if you've been on Reddit lately, but if you go on the Reddit forum, hi guys on Reddit, um, there's blow ups, right? The, pretty much one of the, the electric skateboarders subreddit is pretty much banning anyone who says they own a, a Marbell board, which is crazy, I know. It, you know, it's an open forum. Um, but I think they're having a crisis at the moment. They're, they're, their problem is their marketing was really nice. Don't get me wrong. Marketing was top notch. Raised a lot of money. I, did, I think, did they do more than boosted? I can't remember now. But it was very successful. What happened after that is where I think it fell apart. Um, did they sell more than they think they were going to do? Did they spend the money in the wrong way? Did they get bad advice? I'm not sure what happened. But when they went to deliver their product, it wasn't really well tested and it had a lot of problems. Now, they didn't need to do that. Um, with that much money, they could have done a lot more testing, but I think that the pressure was on, they were overdue, people were losing their shit, and it had to just get sent out. I know how that feels, man. I build them in my garage, I know what it's like. 
Um, for me though, I don't have a lot of money. So I sort of have to build a few, send them out, feedback, fix it up, build a few, send it, that's like a song. Um, they didn't have to do that. So what are they gonna do? They need PR, they need, they need to stop the hurt. Whether they just go, you know what? Everyone who has a bad one, send it back for your money back or send it back for an upgrade or something along those lines. It's, they're gonna have to do something major, otherwise um, they might just end. Sorry, Marbell, I, I'm a bit worried about you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm not saying I'm perfect, okay? I'm just talking. Um, starry, uh, starry. They did exceptional. They probably raised the most money, I think. I have to check my records on that, but they went nuts. How did they do it? Okay, it was cheap. It was a cheap thing. Got everyone in the door. Now, obviously, the price has gone up. Um, but I think their single motor, even though it's got a planetary gear, right? It's gonna be, and they had to invent that. Basically, like, that's not something that existed really, you know, it was on, on electric bikes, the, the concept's not new, but trying to get it into such a small package, um, that's really challenging. And from the videos that I've seen, there's no evidence that it can get up a hill. Um, it's really noisy. So I think what's going on is the problem with trying to construct something like that in such a small space is it's not robust. It's hard to make a really strong housing and make it really robust um, and also have it to fit under a skateboard deck, you know? It's only like that much space at most. Um, that's a huge problem for them. I think they need to go dual drive. That's probably gonna happen, that have to happen. Um, because the other thing, I'm pretty sure they're running 6S, which means about 24 volts. Problem with that and single motors is high current draw, high heat. So I would say the reason they're behind at the moment is huge heat management issues, huge um, noise, and noise uh, for, the, um, for the physicists, for the, for, I don't know, for noise is friction, it's loss of power, it's, it's energy dissipation. So if you hear noise, it means you haven't got an efficient drivetrain, guys. It means, it means something isn't working properly. And that's where they're at, I'd say. So I don't know, they're gonna deliver. I would say they're gonna have a lot of issues like Marbell. They're gonna have customer service headaches and they may not be ready to handle that. They might not have invested in that part of the business and there might be a language barrier. I'd say a lot of their customers are probably from Western English speaking countries and there is a disconnect between cultures and I'm not, this is not a race thing, it's just a customer satisfaction and expectation exercise, you know, and how do I know this? Because I have to deal with it. I know if you make the mistakes with the customers, they bite you and they bite you hard and you can never recover. So Starry, I would say dual drive. I would say they're probably not gonna change their battery, but they should. Um, that's all I've got to say about that. Inboard, inboard. Um, they're really overdue. Uh, their product looked really sweet. Um, they were the first uh, campaign to have the hub motor. And that's cool, man. That's cool. Don't get me wrong. What they're trying to achieve is no easy task. The good thing is they have two hub motors, unlike Starry's one. Um, but I know because I've been testing hub motors quite a lot, trying to get them to be 150% reliable, you know, bulletproof, um, not to overheat, 
to be really talky, really powerful, um, and in a tiny little size. I think their wheel's only 80 millimeters, you know. That's tough, that's a really difficult challenge. So, um, yeah, I would say their delays are mostly due to trying to get that drivetrain perfected. I'm not sure what voltage they're running. Um, I'm pretty sure their battery is pretty low. Most of these companies want to keep current draw really low. They want the current low, they want um, temperatures low because as soon as those two things start creeping up, just asking for trouble. So, you know, they're really going to be trying to, to make that system super efficient and that takes time. So, I don't know. I don't know where they, when are they going to release their product. I reckon more delays are coming, guys. So, um, yeah, inboard more delays due to the, the technical difficulties they're facing with their hub motors. Um, Evolve. Evolve are back on the scene. They've got new um, teaser clips coming out every week. Uh, they've got some pretty cool marketing going on. Um, I think they've been on the forums. I think they've been listening to the community and getting that feedback about what makes a really good electric skateboard. What do people want? Well, I can tell you what they want. Long range, high speed, lightweight, looks cool, um, and not too expensive. Of course they want that. But I think Evolve are listening, which is cool. Their remote control is probably one of the sweetest looking ones with the little screen, that's really cool. So what are they gonna do? Well, we sort of know what they're gonna do. Um, I would say they've got a new carbon fiber deck. Their deck will be a micro drop. It'll be carbon fiber with integrated components housing. Maybe the lid will be on the top. I think it could be on the top. That seals the bottom. I'd say they're gonna have a completely new motor controller in there and obviously two of them, dual motors which is their biggest thing that they're, they're promoting, dual motor performance, which, you know, they're a bit late to that party, but it's a good move. Um, their motors, I think they're like 50 mil, but they're longer. They're censored motors, which is gonna give good startup performance. Um, so what do I expect from them? I think they've got probably the best distribution network in the world for any electric skateboard company. So that's really key for them. They'll be able to release this product and if it is really good, which I'm pretty sure they're gonna make it, they, they're not gonna sort of fuck around with this. This is gonna be, they're putting effort into this. Um, so yeah, dual, dual motors, um, I would say battery in a compartment with a, a lid at the top. Um, it'll be a, a new deck carbon fiber drop down deck is what I'm thinking. And um, price wise, it's probably gonna be up, you know, if we're talking American dollars, maybe like $1,500 at, at absolute minimum. Um, and yeah, it looks like they've got their own brand of wheels that will ship with it. Um, they've got a black wheel. Um, I'm not sure what that wheel is, but it looks like their own. Um, Possibly, uh, I think they've got a seven inch pneumatic wheel. It looks like a custom made wheel. I haven't seen that wheel anywhere else. Um, the interesting thing that they're doing is they're saying that you can swap from anywhere from an 80 mil wheel up to a seven inch, which is 100 and, I wrote it down, it's like 174 millimeters. Um, to, to transition from that size, small to big, is really complex. There's only two ways I know you can do it. That is through the mechanical gearing reduction. So to get to the big wheel, what you probably have to do is change the motor pulley and the belt. And you'll have to go from say a five millimeter pitch to a three millimeter pitch belt to get a greater number of teeth and more reduction. Now that's tricky. That's really tricky. To achieve that, they're going to have to have at least 15 millimeters wide belt, which I think their last system had that anyway. So it's not new for them, but that is tricky. Um, in fact, the more I think about it, they'll probably use three millimeter pitch belts 
through the whole range, I would say. I don't know, their video probably can prove this. I'll have to check that back. It showed their new wheel pulley and from memory, I think it was five mil, but that's not gonna work on the big wheel. Hmm. The only other way they can do it, in my opinion, is controlling the voltage, some sort of voltage regulator or RPM control. Because as you probably know, if you keep putting a larger diameter wheel on it, the top speed just keeps increasing. Now, there's a point where that isn't such a good thing. I mean, you only need to go a certain speed. Their last deck, I'm not sure exactly how fast it, it went, but it wasn't, it wasn't the fastest electric skateboard you can get. So they're definitely going to have higher top speeds, but going from 80 to 174 millimeters without controlling the RPM, that, that could end up being a 100 kilometer an hour board. So they're gonna have to reduce the gearing more. So new, uh, you'll have to swap the belt and the pulley on the motor, or they've got some fancy electricery in there where they're minimizing the RPM. Um, on their remote, there's a button, you can press that and, and it's like a selector. You can select the wheel size and the speed and a few things. So I think, think um, voltage regulation or RPM limiting, um, and perhaps pulley and belt um, needing to be changed for, for that bigger wheel. Um, what else? Well, um, I think they're going to definitely go faster. You know, it's, it's definitely going to be faster. Is their battery going to get any bigger? Their battery was pretty big. I don't think it'll get bigger. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where Evolve's at. I think they've realized that the DIY crew us, crew, you, um, we're sort of getting a bit of momentum, you know, we're starting to build really excellent electric skateboards just with stuff in our garage. So um, all these companies, I personally think, are under a little bit of pressure. They need to bring out faster skateboards, better range, and perhaps make them a little bit more customizable because that's what you guys are going to be wanting. And, you know, I think that the, the, where, where this goes is um, choosing whatever deck you want. You know, that whoever nails that is a winner. Um, that's why I've been, I don't know if you can see it in the background. Um, that's why I've been, de whoa. That's why I've been developing this system. You know, I'm trying to make a universal um, system. So you can take any deck, any deck you like. Actually, this deck, I reckon, this is a good example of what the um, Evolve, the new Evolve deck, carbon fiber deck with a drop down. That's my prediction anyway. I was actually in the process of designing a carbon fiber one as well, but I scrapped that project because I realized carbon fiber is just very, very expensive um, to make. And it's, it's really cool. I, I like it, it's super light, it's super strong, it looks awesome, but it's just, yeah. You, you, once you buy that mold, once you pay for that mold, you're locked into that shape. It's, it's not cost effective to change it. And, and I personally believe as a skateboarder for the last 25 years or whatever it's been, you want a new deck, you want that shape. You know, the shape of the deck is a style thing and it changes and, and it's an artistic thing, you know. People have these unique shapes and it's an expression. So uh, whoever can offer something that um, allows people to use whatever the deck they want, winner. Okay guys, that's Potter's Prophecies. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I hope you like what I'm wearing today. I'm just about to head out. Uh, for dinner with my lovely wife. Um, it's her birthday tomorrow. It's Mother's Day as well. So um, thanks for watching. See you later.